Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and the new edition of our virtual online interview series. And, ladies and gentlemen, uranium is hot, uranium is going green. The European Union even uh, put it on the green metals list. And we want to talk to Blue Sky Uranium. And with us here is Nico Kakos, the president and CEO. Hi, Nico. How are you, my friend? Doing great. Nice to see you again, Jochen. Yeah, nice to see you. Perfect. And Guillermo Pensado, for the first time here, the Senior Vice President of Exploration. Guillermo, pleasure to have you here on board. How are you? Pleasure to me to be here. Thanks for inviting. Yeah, thanks for taking the time, guys. Uh, as I said, uranium is yeah a really, I wouldn't say no-brainer because that's a little bit harsh sometimes and heavy to say, but uh, definitely uranium is a big thing coming up here uh, within the next years as uh, we see a lot of demand. And uh, Blue Sky Uranium uh, is uh, for sure a company which wants to take advantage of that. So, Nico, maybe you can give us a short overview on the company, please. Oh, I'd love to do that. We have a fantastic opportunity with Blue Sky uh, Uranium in Argentina, where we're operating. Uh, what we have is not just a single discovery of a new deposit, but we have discovered an entire new district, an enormous district. It runs over nearly 145 kilometers in length by 50 kilometer wide corridor. It is enormous. We've been working on this for the last 15 years. But what is really exciting about this is that the potential of this district is to become, has a many characteristics like what we see in Kazakhstan, and it has the potential to rank like those amongst the largest districts, uranium producing districts in the world, with some of the lowest operating costs. And we've done some economic analysis that does point that way. So this is uh, a, a new opportunity, uh, unlike other uh, exploration discoveries where uh, a, a new source of uranium could be found uh, in, in, in potentially to the hundreds of uh, millions of pounds. So this is really quite mm -hmm. exciting. Okay, super. Before we come to the economics, uh, Guillermo, I would love to get your take as the Senior Vice President exploration on the Amarillo Grande project and of course also the Ivana deposit with your new discovery. So what's ma what makes it so special in your view? Why do you think uh, this is such a great uh, opportunity? Well, as Nico mentioned before, this is the discovery of an entire new district. And when you go into a new area, it takes your time as every learning curve to understand the district. And this was finally uh, showing the potential back in 2017 when we demonstrate that this huge district with uranium all along the district could comprise potential economic deposits. And this was the discovery of Ivana deposit that it was back in 2017. In those days, our goal was to prove a thesis that we could have potential economic deposit and also that those deposits could be potentially economic in those days when the uranium price was $20 per pound. So we worked it very hard trying to prove it very rapidly we defined resources and we went into preliminary economic assessment to understand that. But mm -hmm. meanwhile, the technical stuff was better understanding the geology of the area. Mm -hmm. And this is very important for the follow-up exploration because give you the understanding and the key tools to advance in exploration. So today we are in one way, advancing the Ivana deposit itself, which is in the southernmost sector of the district. But after that, we maintain an exploration program in a area of 20, 30 kilometers around Ivana, where the goal is to define another Ivana-like deposit in a zone to generate a potential cluster of deposits that could be potentially a feeding a central facility uh, in the district. So this is our present and medium term view of the exploration. Okay, super. Um, Nico, you brought out a PEA already. Can you please elaborate a bit on that? Uh, why is it so favorable? And uh, yeah, 
how much how much resource how many resources do you have so far sure. um what what might be capex you know stuff like this please sure as soon as we defined our first resource which we have just under 23 million pounds of uranium and 11 and a half million pounds of vanadium even at this very early stage we decided to undertake a preliminary economics analysis which is a pea and the reason we did this at this early stage was when we did this back in 2019, the price of uranium was still around $20 a pound, whereas now it's more than double that and, 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 and projected to go higher. But we wanted to know is, do we have a deposit at this time that is competitive in the environment of $20 range? So we really were looking for two metrics. Number one, we were looking to understand what would it cost to put this Ivana deposit into production. Uh -huh. And what we found, it was around $100 million plus a $28 million contingency fee. Wow. That's that, not that much. No, it's not. But what's the key about that number, that as we discover additional satellite uranium deposits within the area, that number is not going to change very much. So it was good to have a handle on that. The second point that number that we were looking for is what actually is the cost to take a pound of uranium out of the, uh -huh. the ground. And we found that the cash costs were running at just over $16 a pound. Wow. So if Ivana was in production, even back in 2018, 2019, when the price of uranium was $20, potentially this would be making money at that time. Now with the price of uranium more than doubled, it looks that much more attractive. And we did a further study whereby we compared where we would rank around the world amongst other uranium producers in terms of cash costs of production. And Ivana, if it was in production, would rank amongst the lowest cost producers in the world. So mm -hmm. this, even at this very early stage, was excellent information for us uh, as management and, and, and for the exploration team, uh, because it gives us confidence now as we step out to discover additional uranium resources in this 145 kilometer trend, we can continue to maintain these low cost metrics. I think we're on to a brand new low cost major uranium uh, global district. Very mm -hmm. exciting. Absolutely. That it really looks like. And I saw in your presentation, you have $18.27 per pound net of buy credits. So I see also vanadium price in your PEA. So how large is the vanadium part and how, yeah, how hefty does it interfere to bring your costs down? Well, vanadium, the interesting thing about vanadium is when we uh, precipitate the uranium, the vanadium comes out as well. So there's no additional process or no additional mm -hmm. cost to bring out the vanadium. It's a byproduct. Now, this byproduct of vanadium, uh, depend, it, it's, also, it's primarily used as, uh, as a steel hardener, but it's also used as a battery metal. So it's, mm -hmm. its demand has been going up recently. It's been uh, mandated. Uh, China, a few years ago, mandated an increased use of vanadium uh, so they can make the steel that it produces harder. And we're also seeing vanadium being used uh, in, in for storage of batteries, large scale storage, that are typically the size of a house. So mm -hmm. as that demand goes up, the price of vanadium has also goes up. Oh, sure. uh, the, the economics 101. So um, it contributes right now between five and ten percent to the to the overall value. Uh, but the interesting thing about vanadium is that we have a ready made market for it. Whatever vanadium we can produce, we can sell uh, domestically in Argentina because Argentina imports all the vanadium that it requires. So, uh -huh. it, and 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 you would get world market prices. We would get full market price for that. Super, perfect, great. Guillermo, question to you. Um, let's talk about the uh, test program you have done for the recovery. I mean, first of all, you have to get out the uranium and the vanadium. So how does it work, Guillermo? Uh, what are the recoveries? How easy to do is it? Can you please describe that for us? Well, this is one of the key part of the, of the project, certainly any mining project. Uh, in this case, we have the supervision of our uh, engineering processing a person who is Chuck Edward, a very well recognized person in the uranium market or industry. 
And what we have done was we did a couple of uh, initial programs uh, back in 2017 in Argentina first and in Canada in the Saskatchewan Research Council later. They both have the same results. They look very similar. And finally, what Chuck Edward de delineated was a, a processing which is very uh, straightforward using very well-known technology and low environmental impact technology. Mm -hmm. This is two steps because the mineralization is in the very fine material of poor consolidated or unconsolidated sediments. Mm -hmm. uh, what you can do very easily and at very low cost is to separate the uranium and the vanadium just by uh, scrubbing and screening. Mm -hmm. So with that part, you pre-concentrate your mineralization by uh, uh, reducing your volume almost to a quarter, and that increase your initial grade almost four times. So wow. that pre-concentrate material that recuperate 90%, roughly 90% of uranium and vanadium, you go into the leaching part, uh, section or part of the processing. And that would be alkaline leaching using a sodium carbonate or bicarbonate. So they are very well known technology and very low environmental impact that reduce all your cost. And after that, you recuperate about 90% about of your uranium. So very good leaching. Mm -hmm. uh, vanadium is lower than that is 56%, but this is common because not all the vanadium is coming with a uranium mineral. Mm -hmm. And we don't go to go as asked it before about the vanadium, we want to take the vanadium out uh, from the minerals with uranium at very low cost. So that gives you an overall processing recuperation of uranium of 85% and vanadium about 50%. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is at very low cost, very well-known technology. You need to develop new technology, new ideas. This is very used and known, and that's reduced finally your cost and the, re the risk to, to prove that processing. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Uh, you wanted to add something? Sorry. No, no, well, but okay. I can add, Good. now that you mentioned, uh, we are just advancing with more uh, bulk testing test work today. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to confirm all the initial uh, studies and go deeper in the understanding of that process. Okay, super. And Guillermo, I just stick with you a second because I saw on your press releases that you guys are drilling also. So how is it going? What is uh, 2022 with the drilling going on? Well, yes, we have two programs at this point advancing. One, advancing the expansion and understanding of the Ivana deposit itself before the launching of a preliminary or pre-feasibility study mm -hmm. expected to be launched by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So we are concluding that part. Uh, and secondly, we are advancing uh, an exploration program in those targets, as I mentioned before, surrounding the Ivana deposit in a distance of 20 to 30 kilometers around Ivana. Uh, this program was initially launched before pandemic times. We had several <laughs> delays due to that, uh, but we expect to resume that program uh, next month. So we are advancing, advancing both programs. One, continue with the Ivana deposit itself toward the PFS and the exploration toward the new the discovery of uranium deposit okay super so there's really a lot going on this year jesus christ that's super <laughs> you're going on high speed I have, to, I have the feeling yeah i like that so of course nico that's then the next question for the ceo do you have the money to do that all is everything clean and clear well we have we have enough money to continue doing what we're doing right now we will we are of course uh still an exploration company so mm -hmm. we will be needing to to raise some additional funds uh, we do plan to do that in the course of the next uh, 45 to 60 days. I think we'll mm -hmm. be looking to do a fundraising, mm -hmm. but uh, because we want to ensure that we have sufficient funds to expand, you know, some drilling programs that uh, we have ongoing. And then in the second half of the year, as Guillermo mentioned, um, we are planning to shift the company towards doing a pre-feasibility study. Mm -hmm. And that's going to require uh, 
probably between 10 to 15 million dollars oh okay 10 months to complete mm -hmm. but that is a very very key study because at the end of that it brings us to the point where we can make a production decision mm -hmm. okay super so how is it to work these days in argentina guillermo probably you are argentinian you sound I'm in spanish argentina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm actually in Argentina, in Mendoza, where we have our exploration oh, office. Great wine region, love it. Yeah, that's a good city to be living <laughs> and to have an exploration office for the company. Uh -huh. uh, and the the project is in Rio Negro province, north of uh -huh. Patagonia. Uh, a great zone for many reasons to be exploring for uranium, uh, because you have good infrastructure in a very well uh, natural resources developing province so they are mining friendly and they understand nuclear in particular because they develop nuclear technology also in that province uh, and from the environmental and social point of view we are in the middle of a desert in a big depression uh, we are not competitors of many other Uh, economic sectors uh, is an isolated zone that it's uh, reduced the concern to to be exploring there and that is very important that uh, we are uh, working in a place with all the support of our team leading a social communication and efforts to communicate but we also understand in a province we, where we can uh, advance uh, our project. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Last question, Nico, for you. Um, I would love to have your view on uranium markets and maybe also you can say some words to the vanadium market. How do you see that? I, I would like to do that. I would also like to add to uh, Guillermo, just before I go into that, add that, you know, the company uh, Blue Sky managed by Grosso Group, Uh -huh. And we have uh, nearly 30 years of experience in, in working with Argentina uh, from, from just from a corporate head office point of view, extremely well regarded in that, in that uh, country. And, uh, and it brings us a, a lot of uh, advantages, uh, you know, with relationships with uh, provincial and federal governments and whatnot. But now to address your second uh, question there regarding uranium and vanadium and the outlook for that, I think uranium is undergoing a new renaissance. It is um, it provides us with a kind of energy which is safe, secure, reliable, and and carbon free. I think it's becoming uh, globally much more accepted uh, that. Uranium is a safe way to produce and, and an efficient way to produce electricity. So this demand is going up and we're seeing uh, nuclear reactors being built around the world. There's also small modular reactors that are going up that are really coming to revolutionize the way that we see energy. And it and it's and it, you know, to have uh, an energy form in car in, in sorry, in uh, wind or solar while it, it, it could be very uh, environmentally very friendly, um, you need, it's not, it's not consistent. Yep. You need a, a steady base load energy. And I think only nuclear energy can provide that. So the future for air, nuclear energy is very strong. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it, it's very bullish. And uh, I think the demand for uranium is going to continue to go up. And the experts who know better than I do, are forecasting a much higher uranium price than what we have right now. Um, okay, what's, what's your take on the uranium price, your, your personal view? Well, I mean, just about 15 years ago when there was a last run on uranium, we saw the price of uranium go over $140, $140. Mm -hmm. and, and that was $140, $2010, right? <laughs> With inflation now, this is changing. Um, but I think it has potential to go even higher than that because... Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, the demand this time it's it the, the the players that are causing the price of uranium to really go up fundamentally it's the it's the it's the demand for using it as energy there are other factors mm -hmm. of course at play but I think that's the primary demand so it's an organic mm -hmm. uh, long-term growth and I feel very very confident in that mm -hmm. so, super and with vanadium yep Vanadium is another mineral I think I addressed a little bit before as a steel hardener. It's uh, it's it's used worldwide, and uh, 
we're seeing that there's a demand for your uh, vanadium for if for our byproducts there would be a demand locally in argentina just as there would be for the uranium because argentina mm. the uranium uh is a nuclear country so mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to supply uh this country domestically and then get to a point where we can be net exporters as well Fantastic. Sounds like a great game plan. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much. That was a great 20 minutes with you. Jesus, <laughs> quite a lot, but uh, very good insight into your company. And uh, you are also a part of the uh, SRC Uranium special report also this year. Thanks for for supporting us here. And I think it's very important that we bring this uh, more and more to the investors, to the awareness here. Yeah, you definitely are a company of choice and uh, I will have also a close look onto you. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Nico Kakos, the president and CEO of Blue Sky Uranium, and also Guillermo Pensado, the senior vice president of Exploration. You heard it, 2022. That's a real rocking year for the company. Really a lot going on. They are working on resource update, pre-feasibility study. They are drilling. And uh, yeah, really a lot is going on there. And uh, I would suggest you really have a look on Blue Sky Uranium. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.